still a, a little bit shocked. Um, it, it, it's interesting because Nikar has been recovering, sort of, let's call them larger stones than what, what most others would recover for, for quite a while, 200 and 300 carat stones. Um, so a 1,000 carat stone, to me, it's the, the historical significance of it. Mm-hmm. And um, if I look at my inbox, as the, the messages continue to scroll in, the, the reaction from the market is actually something I didn't even anticipate. Um, so it, well, what we believed was something fantastic. The market is actually taking it even further, which is, is actually just adding to the level of excitement within Lucara. Uh, and uh, the reactions you're describing here, what are they exactly? Um, it, it's more shock and awe. Huh. Um, the... The fact that a thousand carat diamond has not been recovered in more than a century, um, the, it, it, I think it, it proves the, 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 the significance of this. It would be like finding a dodo bird that is actually still alive. Mm. Um, so I, I think the, the, the market, not just in the, the, the size of the stone, I think a lot of people look at the picture, and especially where you can see the, the, the lady's hand holding the stone. Um, it's a, slightly smaller than a tennis ball. Um, that is an enormous diamond compared to anything anybody has recovered even recently. What does it look like when you find it? Um, so the, the, the stone, if you have a look at the stone, you'll see there's, there's a fairly jagged edge on the outside. So it doesn't look very different to that. In those little cracks, there'll be sort of um, pieces of black rock. We call it a calcrete, which is the, the, the local timberlite, etc. And there'll be pieces of um, country rock in there. Um, and we, 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 we recovered the stone on Monday. We straight away got it down to, to Gaborone so we could clean it. Um, it the, 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 the weight of the stone will drop very slightly. We've still got a little bit of cleaning to do. Um, but, of course, because it's a material, we need to get the information out. Um, but the, the stone actually looks very similar to that when it comes out of the ground. So how did you react when you realized that you found this? Well, they, they, they asked me if I was sitting down first. The, the, the call came through very, very early on Monday morning. Um, and so I, I think that there, there was sort of about a minute's worth of silence while you waited for your brain to actually process um, the, the size of the number. And when, when, when I tell people, um, and they say, so well, how big was it? And you start off by saying 1,000. You can automatically see their faces sort of either light up or the, the shock come across their faces. I um, mean, it is. It's, it's, the, it's the, the fact that um, there's only ever been one stone larger than 1,000 carats, and that was a Cullinan, and that was 3,000, um, 106 carats. Um, the next one down is the Excelsior 995, I think it is. Um, so to, to get over 1,000 carats, it's, it's, it's sort of... It's, to, to me, the, 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 the thousand character is like Roger Bannister um, actually breaking the four-minute mile. Mm-hmm. There were so many people that had gotten so close. Um, and then when he did it, it was sort of the, the, just this wonderful thing. Um, so getting over the thousand characters for us is, is a, a very, very significant achievement. How does it actually... Uh, how do you actually uh, find a diamond? Can you describe how the process is? So what we've actually recently done, um, we upgraded our process plant. And, and um, the, when we talk about the stars aligning, um, the plant optimization was completed only in July this year. Then we brought the streams online. And the technology which we, we've employed actually looks so, so you have a, a radiation source. So you irradiate the diamond, and we look for um, the, the – there's a signature which comes from – how much radiation is absorbed by carbon. So we're actually looking for the carbon that makes up 99% of the, the, the diamond. Mm-hmm. And once we detect that there's a, a sort of a, a concentration of carbon, we have a row of air rejectors. And this is all in one single machine that just pops out the, the it just fires the, the, the carbon material. So it could be a piece of rubber or a diamond. It just fires that out into a concentrate chute where we can then go and hand sort the um, a much, much smaller volume of, of material. Is this very deep? Can you do um, this? The, the mine at the moment, um, where we're mining or where, where these stones came from, it's about 70 meters deep. Um, in the, the, the deepest part of the, the, the open pit that we have is around about 120 meters um, deep. I think the, this, this stone was recovered from an area which is mostly between 60 and 70 meters deep. Oh, and what's the 
possibility that you will find other diamonds, maybe not this big, and, but... Well, st statistically, you, you almost have to hold your breath when you look at the opportunity or the, the probability of recovering um, large stones. I think when we, we said to the market, and we, we know that um, a little bit of history here, we have three distinct extinct volcanoes that we're mining. And the, the way the diamonds are brought to the surface from about 200 kilometers down is in sort of the, the, this kimberlite material. So we have three of these on our property, which we are mining. Um, the, the most prolific with the highest value and the best quality stones is, we, we, we refer to it as the south lobe. And the south lobe is about 80% of the material which we'll mine um, between now and 2026. So there, there's a, a lot of things that, that, that we, we need to take into consideration. But as we've mined more material from the south lobe, we've actually just seen an increase, not just in the, 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 the size of the stones, but also in the volume of large diamonds which we, we receive. But we, we hadn't yet processed a lot of material from the south lobe. So we, in earnest, started to process more south lobe material only in this quarter. So we've really only been processing a lot of south lobe material for the past four to four, or I'd say, um, let, let's make it 10 weeks. Um, and suddenly we recover something like that. So if you look at the probability, there could be another stone. Um, but these are exceptionally um, rare. So to, to sort of, I wouldn't stand with my, my hand on my heart saying that we're going to recover another one. Um, I think we, we need to focus on just how special the one is that we've recovered now. Okay. Uh, what will happen to the diamond now? So um, I think the, the one thing that Vicara has, um, has sort of in, in hand now is time. We don't need to rush out and, and try and sell it. I think the most important thing for us to, to do is, is identify what is the best sales process. Um, and I don't think we can rely on the sales mechanisms which we've used so far. Mm -hmm. We need to look at are there other ways that we can actually um, market the, the, the stone? Um, how do we actually use its historical significance? Because what, what, what we, we, we are a mining company and we're here to sort of make money and sort of divvy that out to our, our shareholders. Um, but we obviously want to make the maximum amount of money. And it's looking at where is the best market for the stone. So over the next few weeks, we will we'll have a look at the stone. We'll most probably bring in um, sales consultants, which we've used in the past, to see how best we can actually market the stone. Um, but uh, there, there's no rush to, to run out and sell the stone to, to the, the, the first bidder. Mm -hmm. I think there, there's, there's a lot of value that we can actually get, not just for Lucara, but for Botswana as well. What do you think? Who buys the diamonds like this? Um, and and it, it's, it's just too early to, to say. It is funny, though, um, we've already gotten calls from people saying, is the stone for sale? Um, which is great because it shows that there is demand for um, something which could be sort of very, very valuable. Um, and I think that that's a good indication. But um, in terms of who buys it and what they pay, it's way, way too early for us to assess any of that. Can you say, uh, can you do an appreciation about the, how much? No. Um, to do an a, a appraisal on what we estimate the stone to be, um, we, we, we could most fully use historical information, but I don't believe that that would actually be accurate because of the size of the stone. Um, I, I think that the significance of the stone should automatically bring a premium over and above anything which we've seen previously. Um, but I'm not an, in a position to make any estimate of what a number would be. Mm. There are some indications out there that the price of diamonds are falling. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so it, it, it's actually one of the, the, the frustrations which we have about sort of how news is disseminated within the, the, the diamond sector. Um, yes, in certain categories, and these are in the smaller, low quality um, categories, the price of diamonds has fallen. There is a lot of available stock for these, these, these smaller stones. But if you look at the larger, higher value stones, um, they actually still flow through the pipeline. There's no glut of these stones um, and sitting in inventory. So we've actually seen very, very stable pricing for 70% of the, the production which we actually have, which is in the larger sizes. Um, so yeah, the, 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 if you're a producer of smaller, finer goods, you've seen a significant reduction in the overall price of diamonds. And this could be anywhere up to 15 20%. Um, but Lucara actually has... 70% um, of our revenue coming from the larger diamonds. It could be more with these stones. Um, 
we, we, we'll see how that goes. Um, but we are not as affected by the, the, the downturn in the, the, the sales of the smaller goods as would other, other potential producers. Um, and I don't, the, 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 the problem is that when people hear about the diamond industry and um, the, the major producers, whether it be De Beers or El Rosa, if they say um, that they've dropped diamond prices, everybody assumes that that has to be the same for everybody in the market. And it's not because our production profile is different. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Um, I, I think that, that sort of for, for certain categories of diamonds, there is going to be a prolonged weakness based on just the, 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 the stocks of diamonds which are available. Um, but for the larger diamonds, there is still sort of significant demand. Um, and I say that because in the last most probably two months, um, apart from the colored stones, but there were three plus hundred carat white stones sold. So the demand is definitely there for the larger high value goods.